we're going to be going over Oella the Fusion as well as the partner. First time we're seeing the partner, we're going to go over his kit. Who are we talking about? Alton of the Shell. There's a lot to discuss and unravel. Let's get right into it. What up team, it's Murdering. We are on the test server with our first look at Ulton of the Shell here. I haven't seen this champion, haven't read his kit. I'm doing it all in front of you guys. I already made a video about Oella. I broke down her kit in depth here, said what could be good, what could be bad, but we really wanted to know about her partner bonus. We said this could probably make or break how good this champion is, but I mean, her model's looking pretty good. Thought it was gonna be looking a little bit too girly for raid, but who was I kidding? Once we see it in game, like we do right here, I mean, listen, enough said, right? So with that being said, let's talk about the new champion, Ulton of the Shell. Everyone said and speculated this was going to be a Void Legendary. It's not, which is the good news. So it's slightly, ever so slightly, more accessible to players. Do I think this is gonna be a guaranteed champion? Mm, probably not. I would be very shocked if it did that, but who knows? So let's go over the kit and see what he brings to the table with the partner bonus that we already know about Oella. First off, we have an A1. I can already see her name in yellowish gold here. Attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 30% chance of placing defense down on the target for two turns. Awesome. Each hit will ignore 50% of the target's resistance if Oella's on the same team. Okay, that's not that good right that's an increased accuracy buff that you can already have on the team with a champion that does a lot more so i mean i i don't know this is weird if the target is under an increased defense buff each hit has an 80 percent chance of removing it this effect cannot be resisted that's going to be baseline according to the text and not have to do with the partner bonus so it's a 50 percent chance so we have a partner bonus that ignores the target's resistance by 50. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think this is that good because, again, I've said this a thousand times, Plarium. If you have a champion that's going to have effects that cannot be resisted and don't require accuracy, make the entire champion not need accuracy. It's kind of counterintuitive to make them require some accuracy, but have some condition where they don't need any accuracy at all. So, so far, not that impressed by this. That's hopefully the A2 is gonna be something good. So we have a surging reversal here. Removes all debuffs from this champion, heals this champion by 20% of this champion's max HP for each debuff removed. So potentially a full heal if he has five debuffs, although how often do you have five debuffs on you? Then places a shield buff on this champion. The value of the shield is equal to any surplus heal from this skill. So it's going to be a small shield, in theory. Finally, attacks one enemy will ignore shield buffs. Damage increases by 20 for each debuff removed by this skill. Okay, so this is a rather interesting play on dealing conditional damage. As we all know, conditional damage dealers are the best damage dealers in the game. Who am I talking about? Turvold's A3. Buffs on him, makes a hit like a truck. Seer. Seer can do over a million damage if you have enough buffs in your team that she removes. Who else? It's hard to think of all of them. I know Thea the Tomb Angel has conditional damage and the list goes on, on, and on. But with that being said, how good is this going to be? It only attacks one enemy. So this is kind of going to be like a one-shot attempt. I don't see it. I'm going to be honest with you. I understand that damage increases by 20% for each debuff removed by this skill, but like I said, how often are your champions just stacked with debuff? If you want to say, what about Spider? Using him as like a negative affinity Spider champion, well then he has a chance to weak hit, right? So how do you guarantee the Spider lings attack this guy when using him for Spider? And even then, can this skill really hit hard enough? to make a difference over using someone much better. And the shield's only for this champion. How about an AOE shield? I don't know. There's just so much to this guy where it's not looking good so far. So the A3, attacks all enemies. has a 100% chance baseline. Love that of placing a sleep debuff for one turn. Again, ignores 50% of the target's resistance if a well is on the same team. Underwhelming. Needs to be better. I get it. 
They don't want you stacking accuracy on this guy. They want you to focus on other stats, but what other stats? Yes, this is an AOE attack, but he's kind of like a debuffer, right? He's literally like a debuffer. So this is taking the kind of direction of a hybrid champion. And hybrid champions are already one of the hardest champions to build in this game. So it's likely you're going to have an increased accuracy buff on this guy, no matter how you look at it. Ignoring resistance, completely fine. What if the enemy doesn't have a ton of resistance? Then I don't know. Builds this champion's turn meter by 15% whenever a sleep debuff placed by this champion expires. So we have the potential of... 15% times 5 can be really good on dungeon waves, especially since it's a 100% chance of sleeping baseline. No books required. That's the only good thing going for this guy. As of right now, I see no need to book him. So you kind of love to see that. But still, the fact that the partner bonus is simply ignoring resistance, I don't think it does enough justice to this guy or to the fusion herself. So the last thing to talk about is going to be the passive here has a 15% chance of decreasing the cooldown of one of this champion's skills by one turn every time they are healed by continuous heal buff the chance increased to 30% if Oella is on the same team again I guess you can just sleep bomb someone if you get lucky it's 15% up to a 30% chance of reducing the cooldown of one of this champion's skill by only one turn so we have a five turn can be booked down to a four turn but like i said we don't really need books on this guy but out of curiosity what we're going to do is we're just going to damage check this guy because well we can so let's go ahead let's fully book him because we need to see his maximum potential damage we don't want to see kind of the half and half and since i have a pretty good idea as far as what other champions are doing damage wise since i always test in the same spot this will be rather easy to test the only problem is going to be accessories here so let's look for attack with attack rolls looks like we just have this one try that on next we're going to go for crit damage what are his base stats so the base attack doesn't look terrible as of right now of course this is with all the bonuses he has so let's just move on and go for the final attack that's a double attack roll there 76 is going to be the highest so far so we're going to try this on now we need an attack ring with attack percentage here and we have none not a single attack percent ring what about attack percent on the sub stat not a single flat attack ring let's see about attack percent on the sub stat there's a single there a triple hp yeah not looking good let me just gamble we'll just roll 12 really quick see if we can get any type of attack rolls here nothing there moving on to the next one surely you're gonna give me some luck for the video okay double roll listen lock it in let's go we're gonna be pretty behind on attack so it's already i don't know if he hits really hard there's a lot of potential for this guy already now we're going to go to gear, go to equip, and we're just going to put him in the best savage cool I have, since that's what I always use to test. I believe it's going to be in my Baron currently. So let's just look for the Baron gear and plug and play. Since I know my Baron is not the plus four champion, I should be perfect with the stats here. So we have Baron here. Now we're going to cool, shorten that, look for Baron. We only need these two slots. Baron, Baron, Baron. There's one. There's two. And we should be five short with masteries. Perfect. So, ton of attack already. Loving the 7,360 attack. Shaping up to be not bad despite not having... You know what? Let's just throw this on since we do want to make this as equal as possible here. We get 3% typical. Let's roll it again. 4%. Come on, one more time. Give me a high roll. 6%. We'll take it. No complaints here on the 6% roll. Let's exit out of that, go here, get as much attack as possible. Flat attack there, moving on here, bam, max roll. We need it because we're missing all of that flat attack from the base stat. Now we're just going to slam this on. 32, we can do a little bit better. 38, beautiful. Now we're going to go for the masteries here, typical one-shot build. Let's go ahead and buy masteries for this guy. We want crit rate to round him off. Now this is where it's going to be interesting. He does have synergy with shields on enemies. Do I need an additional 25%? Let's go ahead and look at his skills really quickly. 
Okay, so it looks like he doesn't deal damage based on shields. I don't know why I thought that. The target said increased defense. Okay, so he just has a shield on himself, so none of this really matters here. Let's just do the typical damage dealing build. Will they have any CC on them? No, that is not part of his kit here. Let's go ahead with this. We're going to go with Helm Smasher for sure. Do I go for Lore of Steel for the little bit of extra attack? Why the heck not? He's a hybrid champion anyway, so let's slap on whatever little accuracy we can manage on this guy. Go for this. We don't really need extra debuff chance, but yeah, none of this is going to matter. So let's just take this and bam, we're good here. We are good. So how are we going to get debuffs on this champion is the real question. We can use Gurp Tuck. That's going to be kind of the easiest strategy to replicate any type of debuffs. Do I have multiple Gurp Tucks? That's the real question. If I do, I'd want to do that to see what four debuffs are going to be like if they are cleansed, unless I don't know enough about Gurp Tuck's kit. I'm pretty sure they can be cleansed because I've seen Bad Owl do that. So I don't know why I'm even talking about that. But the real question is how many Gurp Tucks have I pulled in my time? Surely he's red affinity. If the answer is one, I have to deal with the cards that I'm dealt here and I'll just go with one, but I do believe I pulled multiple GURP Tuck. So let's go ahead and look for him. GURP, 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 there's one. Very nice, that means we have two total and that's all we need. I'm not gonna go crazy here. So we have two GURP Tucks total here and let's just throw on as much speed gear as we possibly can. We want speed boots in the speed set. Accuracy doesn't matter too much. Now we're just going to go ahead and slam on whatever gear I have. I don't even care what it is. Speed is speed. Look, just like that, we have 200 speed. Beautiful. Now, does he have to be ascended? No, he doesn't. Places poisons. These debuffs cannot be resisted or blocked. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. But they don't get bonus damage. I mean, I'm pretty sure this doesn't matter, but I'm going to send him just in case it does matter. Definitely don't need that. I have tons of these. Gurp Tuck Moss Beard. Okay. We're going to head to Dragon because that's where we do all of our testing. Green Affinity is going to be fine. It's going to be strong affinity, but we don't really need that as it is. So we're going to go with Arbiter for attack up. Then we're going to go with the double Gurp Tuck here, which I know I'm going to need in my vault for this because there's no shot I have Gurp Tuck just sitting around. There's a plus two Gurp Tuck there. Now we have to find the shell, Mr. Alton of the Shell. I guess for this I can do that. Find him quickly. Bam. What is his aura? Attack in all battles. We'll take it. We will take those. And I do believe I put him out of the vault. Okay, there he is. We have two sets of debuffs going on. Let me just double check this guy's speed. 258. Bam. Okay, so let's see what we can do on the waves here. Overwhelming. Underwhelming we find out together right here so first set of debuffs go on this guy okay there's three. Second set go on this guy there's six let's boost his turn meter again i'm forgetting defense down and weaken why didn't you guys say something honestly you guys call yourself viewers disgusting okay we're not gonna make that mistake again that was on me now we're ready to roll we have defense down and weaken now. I don't know what I was thinking. What a scuff test this would have been. Okay, let's try this again. Debuffs, defense down and weaken. Please land on everybody. Be nice. Everybody, perfect. So we have this going on. Now, alternate the shell surely goes next. Okay, so this is the AOE here. Let's see how hard this hits with okay so the debuffs don't matter for this skill so i shouldn't be doing this what i should be doing is this removes all debuffs from this champion heals this champion then places a shield buff for two turns value the shield is equal to any surplus heal then finally attacks one enemy damage increased by 20 percent for each debuff removed by this skill so it should be six and we're gonna hit the champion all the way to the right here i believe that's Temptress, Arcanist, Temptress, I don't know, one of them. So let's just see how hard this hits here. Okay. So that just hit for 430,000 damage. Well, isn't that something? So once again, Plurian makes a champion that 
pumps but doesn't work based on how they tried to release them so like first of all who cares about the DLoss this guy has like literally who cares anybody nobody's caring after seeing that number that is insanely high i mean i've already said this and we know this conditional damage is very big in this game the hardest hitting champions in the entire game are based off of conditional damage so let's just see out of curiosity what the multiplier is for this aoe here Okay, that one's not as impressive, but we do get the CC value out of it, so it's kind of cool. Now to put this on auto, he's gonna cleanse himself. So the whole GURP tuck, yeah, 541k with the Helm Smasher proc is like stupid damage. But how many people are running double GURP tuck by a show of hands? I mean, I am, obviously, but are you guys going to be running double Gurb Tuck? Probably not. So, this is looking to be a fun champion. Does this have anything to do with Diffusion? Unfortunately, no, it doesn't. Can you make some cool teams utilizing continuous heal to reduce the cooldowns? Maybe. But yeah, 200k, again, we just saw it there. That is on the lower end of dealing damage, but it does have the added bonus of, I mean, even the A1's rather weak, 60k. Granted, I didn't have defense on our weekend on the target, but 60k is not a lot by any means. And he's taking a ton of damage. So, got this going on here. So, he's going to be cleansing himself. He's not topped off, so we're going to see what the overheal is going to be. And let's just go ahead and target, I guess, this guy since he's in the best line of view. 398k not the 541k we just saw but still very very impressive so this guy's gonna be like uh i don't know comment below where would you use this guy i don't really know i'm curious to see his damage and i should i probably should have just stopped that so we have it up for the dragon itself granted we are strong affinity but like i said I've tested champions in Dragon, stage 25 or stage 24, depending on affinity, as long as it's not weak. And you don't see numbers like 541k often, often. They're all from conditional damage dealers. They're never not from. I don't think even Georgette, I'm pretty sure, does not come close to that because the defense of these guys is just way too small. So we're just going to use A1s here, try to cycle on through. The A1, too weak to one-shot this guy with defense down and weaken. So that is definitely a little bit unfortunate to see. So we got this going on. We got this. Turn meter lowered. He's almost dead. Whatever. We're just trying to do as much damage as possible without burning too many cooldowns. So we can set this up for the next... You know what? I can just AoE them, right? Right. AoE, once again, we've already gone over how underwhelming that is. Okay, now we're at the dragon. So let's set this up properly. Poison's on ourself. Defense on weekend, please land. Defense on weekend has landed. Thought I was careful. I guess I wasn't. I know this champion died and he's not fully booked. So we have to see what it's going to be like with just three poisons. How hard are we hitting this dragon? 448k, okay. I've seen Turval do over a million damage on these bosses, so just to put things in perspective, granted Turvold's kind of built different, we already know that, but I'm going to say I'm pretty impressed with this guy's kit. So now we're just going to kind of cycle through here. Uh, if I'm smart, I top this guy off. And I like to think I'm smart. Sometimes we don't need to boost attack here, so let's just start pumping this until all of our cooldowns are back and we'll try it again. I think everyone's cooldowns are set, except for our guy's stunned so he gets to skip his turn here he's not gonna uh, no he definitely doesn't get another turn let's just do this anyways let's boost get him as close as possible defense on weekends already applied here we have the increased speed another set of debuffs let's go ahead and use this now we're getting a turn for sure a1 here a1 again increase attack because why not 
now we get to use this pumper again and see what the damage is looking like 542k almost 100k more respectable damage I'm not gonna lie he does respectable damage surprised me for sure as soon as i saw conditional damage i said there was a chance in my mind there was a chance this guy could be some type of pumper however at the end of the day setup's going to be extremely important for this guy it's kind of hard if you don't have double gerb tuck you're going to be relying on this guy i don't know what's okay so he was just cleansed by gerb tuck so if you're running with gerb tuck you're gonna have to i don't want to say disable the a2 because that would be kind of stupid but the problem is if you don't do that i don't know we have a good chance of dying or just robbing him of the damage here so there's the a1 here he's still gonna get a chance to get a turn okay 478k he didn't have full health so he pumped he did 4.5 million damage there over double what lydia did where did lydia's damage come from probably war master since some of the others have war master but he's essentially a single target guy he has a really niche cc sleep here but i'm okay with this i think this is a fun champion i know you guys i know you guys are smart and you're going to figure out a way to use this guy to success i already know it just based off of the little amounts of testing i showed you with this guy I'm sure your mind's already racing to 50 different places you can test this guy. Am I expecting you to gear him like this? I mean, you can. Like this is a bad word. With the gear quality like this? No, I'm not expecting that at all. But the fact that he's pumping out very good damage based on the condition is the only good thing going for Alton of the Shell. We can kind of just kiss the partner bonus goodbye because it's just not that relevant. If you are failing to meet an accuracy check, you really have to consider, is it worth bringing a whole new champion just to meet an accuracy check or sacrifice his gear stat allocation just a little bit to give him a little bit more accuracy so he's successful in the runs. Now he looks cool. Kind of looks like a bug. Oh, well, his back looks like a bug. Take that back. A beetle. But his overall look is definitely really, really cool here. So definitely hits hard. That's the good thing. I want to know, what are your guys' thoughts on this? I'm like 50-50. I think it's a cool concept, cool idea. It might be hard to execute realistically. That's kind of my take on this guy as of right now. I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say about this because this is a rather unique kit than anything we've seen before. And the fact that it relies on debuffs instead of buffs is quite, quite interesting. So that's going to conclude this breakdown of Ultimate of the Shell. I'm curious for your feedback, so definitely take the time to leave that. If you enjoy this content, support the channel, subscribe helps me out a ton. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next upload.